Quilty is brought to you by Baby Lock Sewing and Long Arm Machines. Baby Lock, for the love of sewing. Aurafil, Aurafil Italian Thread, perfectly suited for all your quilting projects. Fairfield, together we can make beautiful things. Free Spirit, a new generation of creative and playful fabrics perfect for fashions, home decor, quilting, crafting, and more. Hovel Sewing, cut it close with hovels. Moda, make something quilty with Moda fabrics. Thermoweb, manufacturer of heat and bond adhesives and new Lux interfacings, proudly made in the USA. Hey, Ebony, how's it going? Hi, Mary. Welcome back to Quilty. Love being here. You know what? We love having you here. Your expertness in all things sewing, quilting, patchworking, book writing, speaking, teaching, I could go on. Um, it, it comes in really handy on this show because, you know, people have questions and people have, they have needs. And we try to answer those quilting and sewing and patchwork questions and needs. And you're a really great person to have on the show to help with that. Well, thanks, because, you know, I'm kind of a know-it-all, so this fits in so perfectly. Perfect, because we need to know it all. You know what I mean? So today's show is about managing thread, okay? People have been asking me this. Um, it's not. This is not a specific fantastic show because so many people asked for this show. I couldn't give credit to one person, but they're like, when you're quilting, what do you do with all the threads? Like, there's threads that are hanging out. Do you cut them? Is that dangerous because it's all going to unravel? Do you tuck them? What do you do? So we're going to talk about that today. Awesome. Yeah. So tell me, when you are machine quilting, let's start there. What's this business about bringing the thread up to the front? Or to the top. Ah, so a lot of folks, you know, we have these newfangled machines and they with the automatic thread cutters and right. it sets up the bobbin thread just perfectly. Mm -hmm. But these machines are assuming that you're piecing or you're sewing something. They're not assuming that you're quilting. Right. And so one of the important things is if you once you start quilting, you want to bring your bobbin thread to the top of your quilt sandwich. Why? You want to do that because if you if you let it stay on the bottom when you start, particularly if you're free motion quilting, mm -hmm. you get this little jumbled nest of threads yes. on the bottom because yes. it wants to suck your top thread mm -hmm. down underneath and it goes blah, blah, blah. so you don't want that. No. <laughs> no, you do not. So let's show what we mean. We've got a little quilt sandwich here. I used no pins on this quilt sandwich. I used basting spray. Basting spray. I like the thermal web personally. Um, so. Let's take this over there to the machine and show me how to bring the thread up. Awesome. So I actually have, I brought this thread up um, earlier. In okay. when, so if you're using the automatic thread cutter, you never actually see the bobbin thread. Mm -hmm. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to snip this off okay. and we're going to pretend like we got a bobbin thread. Okay. So I've just done piecing. I put on my walking foot to do some quilting, and I do not see the bottom thread as I'm looking at my machine. I don't see it. Don't see it. It's just not there. Okay. So I've moved my quilt sandwich in here, and what I want to do is I want to just hang on to the top thread. Mm -hmm. I might need a little stiletto here or something. Okay. So I ho hold on to the top thread, and what you want to do is lower your needle, raise your needle. Yank on the top thread, and that's going to bring your bobbin thread to the top. And the re the, you just have to lower the needle and raise it again. Because the way a lock stitch is, that's all it takes for, for your top thread to nip your bobbin thread and bring it up. It's just the nature of the stitch that you're doing. Yeah. So now I have these long thread tails, and I, I want to pull these long and give myself a little bit of room to hang on to them. And then I would just start stitching from here. Okay. Now, some uh, question you might have is, well, what do I do with this thread? Exactly. You know, at the end. That was my next question. So, haha. -ha, so we'll get to that. Okay. So. Know it all. No, what, yeah, know it all. <laughs> um, but what some people do, you might want to, if you're starting on the edge, you know, a back stitch might be mm -hmm. fine. If you're starting in the middle, then it's kind of hard to do a locking stitch in there. So okay. I just usually leave the thread tails long and just go. Go about my business. For stitching. people who don't know what a lock stitch is, can you tell me what you mean? Oh, like a back stitch mm -hmm. or a um, a really tiny stitch length where it's just kind of barely moving and it's stitching in the same spot. Locking locking it in place on a on an edge, perhaps like 
Um, and, and most machines will have a back stitch button right on the front. So if you ever need a really strong start or stop, that's when you would do that. Yeah, and it's fine when you're straight stitching. Mm -hmm. If you're stitching in the ditch or you're stitching on a straight line because you can go right back along. But if you're free motion quilting, mm -hmm. it's really hard to do that. And you don't want to create little knots right. at the start and the stop. So I prefer to just start smoothly with a long thread tail. If you would bring it out of the machine, out of the machine and sure. then show us what to do with that long thread tail, if you're ready to do that, is that yeah, that absolutely. works? Okay. So again, I'm going to um, raise the needle. You didn't do the cut feature. You didn't press the cut button. No, I right? didn't press the cut button. And this is actually a little um, trick that I use on my long arm, which is to pull. I'm I still have the top thread here, mm -hmm. and so I pull this project out and I've yanked on the bobbin thread a little bit. And then I want to just lower the needle again and raise it, and that will help me bring that bobbin thread up. This is coming out of the machine, so I'm pulling on that, and that's where I'm gonna cut it. Okay. So that's how I get it out of the machine. Okay, so we have it here, and you have all this stuff. Yes, yeah, so I've, like, got four, I've got four threads, you've got right? The, yeah, right? The two that I started with and the two that I ended with. Got it. What I have here is an embroidery needle. And I have threaded this embroidery needle in kind of a strange way, mm -hmm. but I've got a loop of thread. So you just take about 18 inches of thread, mm -hmm. fold it into a loop and thread the loop through the needle. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now what I want to do is I'm taking this loop. So I've got my fingers in the loop and I'm going to pull these loose thread tails into the loop. Through the loop. I am going to, to make sure we see, uh, let's see what I'm going to do. I'll put my hand. Oh yeah, there you go. There you go. All right. Look yeah. at that. All right, so I've got the thread tails inside the loop, mm -hmm. okay? Then I wanna take the tip of my needle and I'm inserting the tip of the needle where the thread tails came out and I'm pulling, I'm inserting the needle in between the sandwich so it's not on the back. It's not coming in the back. It's just through the batting and so I go maybe an inch and a half and you see what's happening? That yep. little loop is actually pulling my thread tails that way. Wow. And then I just clip those off. So I have a really neat start and a stop. And that tail, a good length of it so it won't come unstitched, is buried inside the quilt and will never be seen again. And then what my mom has taught me is she just wiggles her finger yeah. on that little hole and that thread will be buried, be totally buried. Yeah, now it's really annoying to have to do that. So yeah. you wanna try to not create so many stops and starts with exactly. your pattern. So kind of plan your quilting out so that you don't have Eight million tails, right? And going around. But if you have eight million tails, you got to get rid of them because one time you long armed a quilt for me, and I had lots of thread tails, and you were like, "Mary, it looks like a pumpkin back there." So you know, we learn. Yes. <laughs> we learn. We need know it alls because <laughs> then you start learning more. So that's great uh, management. Any other quick tips? Anything we missed? We did pretty good. Yeah, I think yeah, I think that's pretty good. The other thing, if you do do that, um, you know, let's say little? you do that that little narrow stitch, yeah. that zero. Uh, zero stitch the link. Lock stitch. You know, the lock stitch. Yeah, that see I named it and then I forgot what the name was. That's why I'm here. Um if you do that, then you could, if you're brave, you know, just take a pair of sharp embroidery scissors and clip those off there. Okay. I just I don't like doing that because if it ever comes unraveled, you know. Or you could snip your top. You could snip your yeah, full top. Just That'd be bad. careful. Okay. Yeah. So there you go. That's ways to manage thread. Thanks, Ebony. You're welcome. Very nice working with you. Good we'll to work with you too. We'll see you next time on Quilty. Bye. Mwah. Quilty is brought to you by Baby Lock Sewing and Long Arm Machines. Baby Lock, for the love of sewing. Aurifil, Aurifil Italian Thread, perfectly suited for all your quilting projects. Fairfield, together we can make beautiful things. Free Spirit, a new generation of creative and playful fabrics perfect for fashions, home decor, quilting, crafting, and more. Hovel Sewing, cut it close with hovels. Moda, make something quilty with Moda fabrics. Thermoweb, manufacturer of heat and bond adhesives and new Lux interfacings, proudly made in the USA.